Welcome back. Today we're testing the EMP shield. I haven't seen anybody on YouTube test this thing out yet, so I figured I'd go mad scientist on this thing just to see what it would handle without breaking. I was recently reminded that I am on the internet, and since you cannot believe anything you see on the internet, I have to provide proof of everything I'm doing here. So I'm going to show you the voltages that we're running. Since I can't meter out the high voltage 400,000 volts, I'm going to utilize the dielectric breakdown of air plus or minus 10%. So we're at least 350,000 volts up to 400,000 volts. And the reason for eight and a quarter inch is because realistically the dielectric breakdown of the air is somewhere in the 18, 19,000 range because humidity and dust, everything plays a part in how it jumps that air gap. Now keep in mind too, I am also a naysayer of this. I don't believe that it'll do what it says. I'm gonna do my best to try and destroy this thing with some high voltage and I would like to actually bump it up to over a million volts, but I just don't have the money to do so. So keep in mind, all the testing that I'm doing is out of my own pocket. I am not backed by EMP Shield, not affiliated with them in any way, and I'm not getting paid for this type of testing. This is just my own at-home testing. I set up a Marx generator, and that's what I'm getting the 400,000 volts from. And if you are curious about Marx generators, you can look them up online, but I don't suggest that you build your own because they can kill you. So keep that in mind. Any testing that you see here, don't try to reproduce this at home. It is very deadly and dangerous if you are not used to working with high voltages. It will jump out and get you. And keep in mind, I'm jumping an air gap of eight inches, so it can jump to you at a greater distance potentially. With a disclaimer of don't try this at home, high voltages are deadly. You may not have a second chance to regret it. Let's get to testing. So just to show that the high test lead how it functions. This is the high test probe at 120 volts, which is currently what I'm running. It shows 0.122 for 122 volts. It's a thousand to one ratio. If it shows one volt, then it's 1000 volts. So we're 0.122 volts AC at 120 volts. I have several components, electronics hooked up to this. So you'll see as the different voltages spike, what we get. This is the EMP shield showing that we're only hooking up to one line. So we're not doing a, the split phase function. We're, we're just doing 120 volt instead of 240. This thing claims that it can protect your whole house just by being connected to your panel. So we're testing that too. So it's at the end of the line on these tests. So not hitting the panel first, which would be hitting it first shunting to ground, we're hitting at the end of the line, which would be your house side. And we're hitting all these voltages on the house side. So it's gonna be hitting the electronics on essentially your thermostat and HVAC system first, LED lights, GFCI. Uh, we've got some power pack in there and that's essentially what we're doing. Um, I will prove the first voltages that we're hitting with, which is 20,000 volts. The lab is operating and we will take off the power side. I've got a separate ground rod for this outside. I'm not having it ground or shunt to ground in any part of my house. And I suspect that they're using MOVs, which are metal oxide varistors, to shunt to ground. And how those operate is you've got a disc with a dielectric breakdown in it. When it hits a certain voltage, it goes from infinite resistance to zero resistance, which would shunt directly to ground or whatever the other probe is hooked to, which in this case is more than likely ground. I have a feeling that if you had a floating ground, this thing would not operate properly and potentially kill electronics. So keep that in mind too, you have to have your ground connected. We're gonna go ahead and get started on this and make it real quick and easy for you guys. So that way you're not watching a 20 minute long video. So I've got to test each side of this coil to ground. So we'll get half the voltage on this side and half the voltage on that side. And this is our ground probe. All right, power on. Lights go ahead and flicker every time. So we've got 10,500 volts on that one. All right, so we've got the other side hooked up and we'll go ahead and turn on the power. And we have 9,790 on this side. So it's a little bit lower. And just so you can see, I'm hooking up both neutral and hot 
to each probe, so we're getting the combined voltage of the entire coil. Three, two, one. All right. All right, I don't see any smoke being let out. Let's go ahead and see if this lab still works. There we go. All right, we still have a flashing light on our furnace, so that's still operating. One of the two lights turned off. Oh, maybe I have to hit the GFCI. Let's try that. Yeah, that's what it is. I say we hit that one more time. One. I'm kind of curious what kind of voltages are going out the ground here. Oh, see, we did get a spiked ground. Interesting. Okay. Just wanted to see. It is supposed to be 30,000 volts per centimeter. We've got eight and a quarter inches here. Oh, you heard that. Zap again. Zap, zap, zap. All right. We should be fully discharged at this point. I'm gonna go ahead and hook her up to the lab. I do not know what's gonna happen with this. Here we go. Interesting. I am kind of curious if anything is destroyed on this. We do not have any puffs of smoke. I'm kind of surprised. All right, let's try this again. Okay. And again. You can hear it sizzling through. Interesting stuff. I got the probes close together, so if it's not connected to the lab, it'll arc across those two probes. If it's connected, it won't. So let's go ahead and do this again. You can hear it sizzling. There's no arcing across. And disconnected. Well, I would say that's definitive evidence Everything survived. We've got both our LEDs. We still have our furnace, which I just stepped on the cord. Let's <laughs> re hook that up. That's proper electrical work right there. All right. We still have our furnace and it should kick on here any second. There it goes. The furnace is on. I'm gonna hook this up a little bit differently. Instead of having a dynamic charge go to this. I'm gonna have a full static charge hit. Okay, there's 15 hits. Instead of doing a dynamic charge where it was just connected directly, I'm having the full static hit the conductor as if it were static charge hitting the house. So hopefully that proves it to everybody that I hit this with the voltage I've been claiming. If you don't believe it, I don't know what else I can do to show it. Um, I've got no reason to, to make this up. So, you know, I guess take, take it if you want. If you don't, I don't know if anything survived yet. So let's find out. Now this could be related or it's unrelated. I'm not sure, but uh, the refrigerator and freezer I've got upstairs, the battery backup system on that started freaking out. It went to battery mode and drained the battery, so I'm not sure what happened there. I'm hoping it's unrelated, but I don't know. 
Um, I, sh I am not connected to the house ground in any way or form, so this should not be connected to my house system other than what I'm doing right now. And maybe that GFCI tripping here is enough to cause the issues up there, I'm not sure. All right. So, I think that's something. So our EMP shield still shows it is working. We still have both LEDs. We still have a furnace. I would say without question, this thing actually does do what it's claiming and more. Uh, we just hit this thing on the house side, so not even the panel side. So we hit this thing on the house side with at least 360,000 volts and it is doing just fine. Nothing is failed. We have everything working just as it was before. Um, I would say that is definitive that this thing works. I would say if you have any doubts, I would say try it yourself, but don't try this at home. By all means, do not try this at home. This is a 20 stage Marks generator. Each capacitor is good for 20,000 volts. And so you've got a potential of 400,000 volts with a 20,000 volt power supply. And so that's what we are running to this thing is 20,000 volts power supply to 20 capacitors. And the way the Marks generator works is when one capacitor discharges, jumping its gap, it causes a cascade for everything to dump all at once. And so that's how you're able to get such large voltages. Again, this is a low amperage device, so it's a high voltage, low amperage. So we are not hitting this with the maximum amperage. Lightning strikes, you'll have an excess of four, five, 6,000 amps, but the voltage could be anywhere from 50,000 hitting the ground up to a million if it was a direct strike onto your conductors. There is a story online of one of these having a direct lightning strike to the grid on a pump station. So this is a city pump station. It completely melted down the EMP shield, but everything that it was connected to, so that panel and everything downstream was just fine. All the pumps survived. And something like that would typically melt down those windings. I can tell you after taking 360,000 volts that I'm really impressed with this EMP shield. Everything seemed to hold up just fine. It didn't blow up, it didn't melt down. I'm giving that a thumbs up right there. Um, we didn't lose any equipment, so that's kind of cool too. And I would say this was a successful run. Thank you for joining. And if you have any questions, be sure to ask. We'll go ahead and hit up any questions that you might have. is a destroyed LCD screen.